In this tutorial, we're going to create a staggered weighty balconies building that's inspired by the new way of living building by Hub for Architects, which is a residential proposal in Upper Australia. Throughout the video, I'll be sharing some techniques on how to create those beautiful wavy shapes and strips. You'll learn how to control the number of floors and strip count, as well as the size of the balconies. Without further ado, let's get started. We need to create a base curve. You can choose any shape you want, but for this example, I'm going to use a rectangle shape. To create the rectangle, we'll use the rectangle component and specify the x and y distances. I'm going to use the construct domain component to set the distances. Since we want the rectangle to be placed at the center, we'll set the start and end domains to be opposite, which means we'll use negative of the starting domain. After that, I will copy and apply the same process for the y distances. To get a smooth round shape, I will set the radius to around 1000 centimeter. It's important to keep in mind that the size of the rectangle is actually twice the X and Y domain inputs, since we set them to be negative to positive. The next step is to create the wavy shape. To do this, we'll divide the base curve into equally distributed points and move them in the normal direction to the curve in a wavy shape. First, we can use the divide curve component to divide the curve. By connecting the rectangle to the curve and setting the number of divisions using the count input, we can get division points and tangent vectors. These will help us move the points in the normal direction. Next, we'll use the move component to move these points. To move the points in the normal direction, we'll need to create a normal vector that is perpendicular to the curve. This can be done by taking the cross product of the tangent vector and the z vector. By controlling the z factor, we can adjust the magnitude of the normal vector and make it oscillate, creating a wave-like effect. To do this, we need to set specific vector values for each point. The first step is to generate a set of equally distributed numbers using the range component. The count must be similar to how much point we have. So I use the point count. Next, we'll set the domain based on pi. This will allow us easily determine how much cycle we have. For example, if we want 12 cycles, we need to set the domain from 0 to 24 because one cycle is equal to 2 pi. We can then multiply this domain by 2 and connect it to our working domain. This gives us equally distributed numbers from 0 to 24 pi that we can use with a cosine function to get 12 cycle oscillating results. To see what we've done so far, we can connect the output to the quick graph component. In this example, we're setting our count to 12. This means that if we count from one peak to another peak, we get exactly 12 cycles. Now that we have the cosine results, which are between minus one and one, we need to remap them to a new domain so that we can use them effectively. To do this, I'll use my previously adjusted remapping setup from the Brickbox plugin. You can watch this and other useful plugins in the card section. Once we've remapped the values, we'll set them to the Z factor. This will allow us to move the points based on the cosine values and create the desired wave-like effect. The next step is to create line connections from these oscillating points to their average center. Here's our strategy. We'll place the points that lie within one cycle in their own separate branch. From the first set of points, we'll select the middle point. Then we'll create a line that starts from this midpoint and connects to each point on the wave. First, let's group those points into separate branches. To do that, the number of points must be a multiple of the number of cycles so that each cycle will have evenly distributed numbers. To achieve this, I'll multiply the number of waves by another value that will control how many points will be in one cycle. Next. I'll create a series of numbers where the step count will be the number of points per wave and the count will be the number of cycles we have. This will generate a number sequence that represents the point gap inside one cycle. To create domains based on these numbers, I'll use the consecutive domain component and set the additive to false. Then I'll use the sublist component to place those points in separate branches based on these domains. To see what we've done so far, I'll connect the polyline component to create polylines in each branch. However, we'll notice that the last cycle is missing. This is because the number of cycles is greater by one from the division result. To fix this, 
I'll add the expression x plus 1 to account for the missing cycle. If we take a look at the last result, we'll notice that the points overlap at the end and create gap. This is because the range component generates one more result than we set for each division point. To remove the last result, I'll use the cool index component with an index of minus 1. If we bake and see each polyline, we'll see that they're made out of each cycle separately. To reverse the wave, I'll reverse their mapping domain. Using the previously created sublist component, I'll partition the unmodified points into similar domains. From this list, I'll select the midpoint using the list item component. The index will be based on the number of points in each branch which we'll divide by 2 using the expression x over 2 and set to index values. Finally, we can create lines from each midpoint to those oscillating points. The next task is to cut the curve at the starting location with the same wave shape. To achieve this, I'll use the shatter component which will separate the curve at the specified parameter. This will shatter the curve into two parts and I'll choose one of them using the list item component. Next, we'll divide those curves into equally distributed points and move them in as direction to create this shape. To move these points, I'll use the move component with a vector in the z direction. For the z factor, we'll create a graph mapper setup. To do this, I'll use the previously set graph mapper from the brick box. First, we have an equally distributed number from 0 to 1 from range component. Those values will map by graph mapper, then it will remap again using remap numbers to new domain. Those map values will set to Z factors. Now we can play with remapping domain and graph shape. From those points, I will create NURMS curve. This will give us curve based on those points. The next step is to create those wavy edges. Our strategy for this is to trim the curves at the ends and then modify the endpoints using the graph mapper. To trim the curve at the end, we'll use the extend curve component. To trim it inward, we'll use a negative component instead of extending it. Let's take a look at our data tree. The points are placed in their own separate branch, but we need to place the points that are in a similar cycle in one branch. So we need to trim those two levels. To do this, we'll use the trim tree component with a level of two. Here we have 35 points in each branch, which we can modify based on a single graph mapper. In other words, these 35 values will follow the same graph mapper. Next, we can move these points in the Z direction and use the graph mapper setup we previously adjusted in the brick box to modify the shape. The values obtained from this setup will be used as Z factors. We currently have 11 values from the range component, but we need to match them to the point count, which is 35. To do so, we need to go back to the start and determine the point count per wave. In this case, we set it to 34, which can generate 35 equally distributed numbers in the range component. We can then connect this directly to the step of the range component. This setup is similar to the previous one, where we have equally distributed numbers. We then remap these using a graph mapper and remap numbers. Next, we move these points in the Z direction based on the chosen graph type. We will choose the Gaussian graph. Here's a little shortcut. 
pressed G while hovering over the graph type to select it. Our goal is to create a polyline that connects points in this manner. To achieve this, we need one more set of points where the endpoint of each polyline is at the same height. To accomplish this, I will move the previous set of points in the Z direction using constant Z vectors. To ensure that these points are above the first set of points, I will add values from the remapping domain and use them as a Z factor. So now that we have our three sets of points, we need to organize them so that we have three points in each branch. To do this, we can use the merge component and match the data structure using graft and simplify. Once we've done that, we can create a polyline out of each branch separately. The next step is to create a surface from each cycle. However, we cannot simply connect the curves to the loft component because the current data structure has one item in the last branch and 35 branches in level B, which is not compatible. To resolve this issue, we can use the flip last component to flip the data structure. Alternatively, we can trim the last branch, but this may not work if there are more than two items. Now I can use the base curve to create a surface. This time, I'll simply trim the last two branches and create a loft. All right, it's time to give thickness to each curve. So I will merge and join those curves. To make sure that the corresponding curves are in the same branch, we'll graft and simplify both inputs. I want the thickness to go in the normal direction to the overall shape. So in this case, I'll create a mesh loft and the offset will goes to mesh normals. But before that, I need to trim the last two branches so the lofting will occur in each column separately. Here we have an error since mesh loft requires a polyline, so I'll rebuild the base curve with a degree of one. To avoid any potential issues in the future, I'm going to unify this mesh. Next, I'll offset the mesh using the Weaver Bird's offset mesh component. Our goal now is to create a surface from those two mesh wire frames. To achieve this, we'll extract all the vertical curves and create a loft from the corresponding curves. To do that, we first need to split those meshes into strips of quads. To begin, I'll merge both meshes and then use a combination of the mesh direction and mesh stripper components. This will generate mesh strips from which we can extract the mesh edges. By doing this, we can easily separate the horizontal and vertical wireframes. Just keep in mind that this method only works if all the mesh faces are quads and have no poles.
Now we have obtained all the vertical curves from the naked edges of the mesh strips. If we take a closer look, we can see that we have 49 curves in one branch, but they are in horizontal order. To join these segments, we need to turn them into a vertical order. So I'll use the flip last component to flip the last branch and change the order to vertical. Once I've done that, I can join those curves together. After joining those curves, I'll trim them back, which will give me 49 curves in one branch. Once again, I'll use the flip last component. This will place the two corresponding curves in one branch. If you remember, we used merge before, and that's where those two branches came from. Now that we have two curves in one branch, I can use the loft component to create a surface between those two curves. After that, I can give thickness to the surface by using the offset mesh component. All right, now we're coming down to the wire here. I want to take you through everything I do offline in rapid fire. So let's talk about the first step to create a staggered effect in the balconies. What I did was use a linear array component to array the base curve in its direction. But the issue was that the seams of each curve were straight and aligned, which would create overlapping balconies. So I needed to select the curves based on patterns zero and one. I used a dispatch component to split them into two lists. Then, I shifted the seams using the seam component, which resulted in a zigzag orientation. Now, if we apply the previous cosine graph to the curves, the wave pattern will follow the staggered effect. Let's take a closer look at those strips. As you can see, it pinched down to a small area, which can cause them to overlap. To fix this, I selected the curves based on their patterns and separated the odd and even branches using the split tree component. Next. I trimmed the curves based on the distance they were from the base curve. This reduced the number of strips in the overlapping area, but when we trim the curves, the control points differ. That's where the next step came in. I matched the control points and applied the previous loft and thickness setup to create a smoother and more consistent look. That's it for this tutorial. If you want the final grasshopper script, you can get it on my Patreon page. By doing so, you'll be supporting me to create more quality tutorials. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.